Howdy y'all, Fuzzy Biker here. Look what we're going to hop on today. This is quite a machine. It's got a little bit of a story. I'll tell you about it as we ride. The equipment, we've been working on it. This is a bike that's a uh, work in progress. I have not ridden this thing before. It has to be neutral to start. Key is down here on this one. I think he said this was the start button. This has got S&S &S cams which Baxter Cycle does have right now in stock. I don't think they have that many sets, three or four maybe. And then it's got the, the rubbery intake system, that 40 millimeter intake system. That is really, that's, that's the brass band on this one. Diablo pipes. Wow, it really pops. It really pops. Mirror down there. We are here at Baxter Cycle in the mighty Minitropolis of Marnie, Iowa. Right there. You're in the market for a newer used Royal Enfield Triumph Plus British bike of any kind. Get yourself down here. Boy, the clutch is a little different on this one. I have to get used to that. He must have did some real uh, work on that. This is a bike that's been uh, worked on over the years quite a bit. Good friend of mine's toy. I like it a lot. First time I've ridden it. Wow, it sounds good. It sounds real good. It really has a bark. It's got some real tall tires on it. I like it. I like it. Let's see how she does on the spin test here. 55.1 inch wheelbase is stock. That's about 1400 millimeters. Look at that, huh? Me gusta, me gusta mucho. This is really nice. She really pops. This one really pops. What a machine, what a machine. <laughs> oh my goodness, this is a hoot. We found the rev limiter. <laughs> she gets there quick. The tires are an interesting feel. It's got those old fashioned tires. We'll stop and take a look at that here in a minute. Wow, this thing. It pops. Those pipes, you know, it's a two to two system, Diablo system, from the head all the way back to the tailpipe. Very good sound. This is a screaming machine, my friends. A screaming machine. I wonder if I have enough fuel in it to go down the highway. Hola, amigo. Let's go make some noise. It just flies. It just flies. Pickup is amazing. Absolutely incredible acceleration. Rev limiter. What a machine. What a machine. Absolutely impressed by this. Lots of good low end, low end torque. Mid-range torque, lots of good torque. And boy, does she sing a good song. Incredible, absolutely incredible. What a bark, what a bark. Do a little spin test here. Got those heavier tires on it. Hey, we got a car coming from the other way. Let's uh, 
We'll clear up for that one, huh? <laughs> All right, if y'all are ever in Marnie, Iowa, get yourself up here to the derailed grill right there. Good eats, good eats. Wow, this thing is fun. Possibly the most, possibly the most responsive interceptor I've ridden yet. I would say definitely. She really barks. She really barks. Handling's a little interesting in that it's got those tall tires on it. This has a YSS suspension on the rear and progressive springs on the front with the uh, adjustable, uh, I think it's preload right there. So he's done a bit of work to that. I'm not sure if he's done anything to the brakes. Maybe he changed the uh, brake pads. Brakes are 320 millimeter disc on the front, floating disc with a uh, two piston uh, vibri. Rear would be a 240 millimeter disc with a single piston vibri. I like this. I like this a lot. What a bike. What a bike. You know what? We're making a lot of noise here in town. I better, uh, we're going to settle down. <laughs> we are going to settle down or we're going to rile the locals. The natives will get upset. What a bike. What a bike. Uh, in stock form, the front suspension is about 4.3 inches. That's about 109 millimeters. And the rear in stock form is about 89 millimeters, which is about three and a half inches. I love the way this thing handles. No traction control. Boy, does she bark. Boy, does she bark. Weight in stock form is about uh, 213 kilograms or about 470 pounds. This one is substantially lighter. Everything's been stripped off, changed with aluminum. You know, the, the bike is probably, I bet it's close to, closer to 400 pounds, less than 200 kilograms. Loads of fun to ride. Very responsive. I'm just totally impressed with it. You know what, let's pull it over and uh, we'll get the other camera out and do a little talk. Kind of go over what has been done. What a bike. What a motorcycle. I do not want to get off this thing. <laughs> do I ever want to get off a motorcycle? I mean, really? Look at that beautiful triumph. Okay, let's get this thing parked and get the other camera out and see what we can learn. Wahoo! All right, y'all, that was quite a treat, quite a treat. Look at this hot rod. I don't even know where to start. I just had a ball riding it. Everything about this is a step above anything else I've ever ridden in interceptor-wise. It's just an amazing machine. It's got quite a story to go with it. I'm really not sure where to start. I'll tell you right now, it started out as a Continental GT and has been turned into an interceptor, but uh, we'll get back to that in a bit. So what is an interceptor? It's a 648cc air-cooled, oil-cooled, parallel twin. There's the oil cooler. Four valves per cylinder, single overhead cam with a six-speed transmission. Those of you that watch me know that I love the transmission and uh, engine combination. It just seems to be perfect. In stock form, it puts out about uh, 47 horsepower, I think. 39 foot-pounds of torque, that's about 53 newton meters. This is far from stock, far from stock, and we'll get into that here in a second. Well, you know what, let's just jump right into that. The big thing that he did to this, a couple things. One is he put a set of SNS cams in there, and I'll get into the details of that in another video. Uh, we'll learn more about that later. And that really made this thing sound different and jump and perform and do all kinds of neat stuff. The other big thing he did was this revel, revelry, revelry racing intake system, 40 millimeter intake system. You know, it's uh, made out of a piece of billet aluminum. It's a company in Australia. They've got a great uh, YouTube presence that you need to check out. Got these pod filters. Got this Diablo pipe. Starts up here, goes all the way. Cat's gone, all that neat stuff. Beautiful sound. I think the uh, restrictors are still in it. But uh, anyway, just, just fabulous. Uh, other things have been done to the engine to make it go. And uh, 
I can't remember all the little details he was telling me about. Uh, a lot of things have been unhooked, a lot of things have been tuned differently, changed up a little bit. It's a real work of art, real work of what a guy like me calls a work of art. You know, it's just a lot of neat stuff that's happened. Uh, a little bit about the front end. So everything's polished. He polished the rims. I think they started out as black or aluminum. Polished the, uh, took the uh, coatings off of this. He wanted that look. Jumping up here, you know, the headlight bucket. This is the high-low switch here now. These special brackets, Diablo, Diabolo or whatever blinkers right here. He's got uh, progressive springs in here with compression adjusters right here that he's added. Uh, jumping up here to the bars. Left blinker, right blinker, start button. I don't know what that is. Horn, horn. It's got these nifty uh, built well. I think these are built well grips. Maybe they're not. They look like it though. This is a monotone product here. This is a built well whiskey throttle right here. He uh, stripped all this off. You know, he's trying to get to as much shiny stuff as possible. I mean, look at this. This cable here runs through the bars. Neat little mirror, and that mirror actually works, by the way. Relocated the ignition and the gauges, of course, here. Custom made bracket to hold the gauges. I do like the gauges on the right versus the left for some reason. You know, that's because I'm right handed or not, but isn't that neat how he's done that? Just beautiful. Stripped everything out of here, did this all on his own, no kit. Made a plate to go back here, the battery. He's going to relocate that yet. He has a plan for that and all this stuff. You know, with any, like any race bike, you got the guy's got all kinds of things he's going to do, have done, and are going to do. YSS suspension on the back. He just readjusted these right before I rode it. These beautiful tall tires. It says 4.5 by 18. Beautiful, aren't they? Shinkos, I think. Let's see if we can find a tail. Yeah, Shinko right there. Absolutely gorgeous. Very tall, very good looking. He's got these uh, stainless fenders on here. Notice the clearance here. We are talking about that. He was going to do much gravel. He'd raise these up a little higher, I think he said. Uh, jumping back here again. Again, the stainless steel fender back here. Look at the uh, blinkers back here. <laughs> Those are metal, by the way. They're not plastic. So if you're going to have them there, that's a good place to have metal. Love the little tail light. Let's see if we can turn that on. Yeah, look at that. Isn't that neat? Very nice. And then jumping up here to the front, the headlight. Oh, a little crack and he dropped the bike last night. So they've been working on this all night long to get it ready for today. They put the cams in and the you know, rubbery intake system on it last night. So this is really a first day riding things. You know, they've been trying to get it all tuned up today. And uh, they've done a pretty good job, but of course there's always more room for more. But what a what a machine, huh? What a machine. I love it. Aftermarket seat, MK Designs probably. I thought it was comfortable. Uh, this is the kind of bike where, you know, you want a flat seat where you can move back and forth and do all kinds of neat stuff. Just a remarkable amount of work everywhere, isn't it? Just absolutely amazing. So why did he start with a uh, Continental GT? Well, the bike had been in an accident, and so he got it that way, and because of that, he's been able to just, uh, he got a lower price, been able to do all kinds of things with it. You know, he was showing me the seat pops off, the ECU's right up here. All kinds of neat things. Loads, loads of ways to go to. Now he was also telling me about future plans on this, and I, I really don't want to get into those. We'll surprise you with another video on that. But just a really nifty job on everything. And in writing it, it it's so responsive. I have driven a lot of interceptors, dozens of them, and uh, they're all fun. Every single one of them. I just love this. Everything from bone stock like that one over there to something like this. They're just a ball. They're an absolute ball. Look at the little scrambler one over there. And uh, this one is by far the most uh, reactive, I would say. I didn't really top it out or anything like that, but I will tell you that uh, she did pick up quickly and the back tire was easy to make rotate. <laughs> precision, infield precision uh, chain guard right there. He did have to add length to the chain, had to move the tire back. Uh, when he got the little speed, the tire grows. They're getting tire rub back there. So that was another another thing they had to do. But really just quite a beautiful machine, isn't it? I really love this braided line stuff that they've got going on here. Uh, he's talking about relocating the master cylinder too. That was another interesting thing he was telling me about. And like I said, we'll come back to this bike later. There's a lot to see here. You know, this is an example of what you can do with an interceptor. I mean, look at this. This is the close to stock interceptor. You know, a beautiful bike and on right there on its own. 
and this is what kind of magic can be done. You know, another example of the magic that can be done with an interceptor. And it, they're affordable bikes to buy and they're affordable bikes to modify. There's just a lot you can do with these hot ruts. Absolutely love one. And I really don't know why I don't have one. I just, I gotta get one, I think. I just gotta get one. I gotta figure out how to make that happen, my friends. Anyway, if y'all are interested in a beautiful Royal Enfield like this or of any other type, a new or used Triumph Royal Enfield, classic British type bike, need parts, accessories, backpack shoes, anything at all, get over to BaxterCycle.com t-shirts. Got that new uh, Wahoo t-shirt. And anyway, get over to BaxterCycle.com and get yourself some of that hot, hot rod stuff. Now life is good. I'm gonna go out and ride my bike. Y'all do the same. Wahoo.